I'm Saskia Dorn, expert and consultant for corporate digital responsibility. Digital corporate responsibility or corporate responsibility in the digital age of companies. And so I combine sustainability and digitization with my company, WiseWay, which I founded almost 10 years ago. I do all this against the backdrop of my more than 25 years of work at Deutsche Telekom, where I joined. When the internet learned to run, and since then I have been doing management tasks in the field of the internet, online, and digital. And I also have an MBA in sustainability. MBA in sustainability management. So on the one hand, you're a developer of leaders, I'll say in the broadest sense, and you're self-employed in CSR. Exactly. At the moment, I'm working on digitization in HR at Deutsche Telekom, and otherwise I'm advising on how to digitize responsibly. In other words, how to handle tech and data responsibly, what that means for employees, what that means for customers, and what it actually means to have a digital business model with responsibility as a company. Thanks. How are you, Do A little wrap-up. How did you get there, to this focus? That how? This became your professional focus. Well, all right, if you take a look from the beginning, at Telecom, I joined Telecom out of sheer fascination for the Internet back then. So I am initially during my doctorate. We were working with computers and models, and during my PhD, a colleague said to me, would you like to surf to New York sometime? And I was like, yes, I would. <laughs> that was possible at the time, so to speak, with the university network, and I was totally fascinated by the internet and networking and then wanted to do something with multimedia, and multimedia was what publishers were doing at the time, which meant that I went into publishing after I finished my doctorate. Classic book, you have to say, because multimedia was so small and at some point in 1997 telecom was looking for a product manager for telelearning, teleoffice and telemedicine and that's where I got in, telemedicine, and that was my real dream job back then. Mm -hmm. And how is it that you ended up freelancing with the CSR? Yes, good. For many years and decades, I have worked in various jobs in product management, CRM, data management. So I did these topics and then at some point I asked myself, what does this actually have to do with my original studies? I am a biologist. Yes, that was somehow already a first reorientation then again to ask myself, how can I connect these things with each other? And then I wanted to continue my education and have continued my education with this part-time study. I had then done another MBA in telecom, and then again the external MBA with sustainability management, and I discovered this topic. What does that mean? This is also called a non-market strategy. So not only to manage products, but also to move as a company in the social space, so to speak. Exactly. I then discovered that is my heart's theme. That is, you are actually by nature, in quotation marks, you have already landed in STEM, through your biology studies, and then went on to get further qualifications, via university degrees. What else does your training rhythm look like? Do you otherwise go into training courses or do you do it more informally? How do you develop personally? Yes. At the very beginning at Deutsche Telekom, I now had a doctorate in biology and then went to publishing houses as a doctor of biology and I had no idea about publishing. I learned everything there somehow. Quite 
quite well, like that, proofreading books, and it was similar. I somehow did that for a year and a half, and then I joined Deutsche Telekom in product management and that was somehow very similar to today. I notice that was the time when T-Online was founded. So these first BTX times were over and Telekom wanted to offer products for business customers, so not only for private customers, so the internet was almost commercializable and it took people to drop, and not the ones who were already there. There were many of them, but those who bring in something new, and at that time, they hired people with academic degrees who somehow had something to do with it. So either STEM subjects or also, of course, business administrators or lawyers. And the onboarding back then, well, it wasn't yet the way you would do it today. Yes, do it. If you had internet access at all, we all learned on the job or experienced it that way. You simply learned and then, of course, benefited over the years from a so erlebt, ne? man hat das dann einfach gelernt und dann natürlich über Jahre profitiert von einem Company that also has a very distinctive training system or continuing education system with lots of training courses. Und, um, But I have to say, this on the job never stops. I have all changed my job very massively, at least every three years. So, Anything but. How can I say a clear line? You can't tell it afterwards, but. That was always so pleasure driven. That's what I'm in the mood for right now. And yes, otherwise a lot online of course, online, online, online. In recent years anyway, I mean, this has now really prevailed with everyone. Even take VHS courses online. It is noticeable that you are fascinated by the possibilities that were offered to you or that you may have taken from yourself. Or what fascinates you about this path you followed? Or what fascinates you about this path you followed? Yes, well, well, I say, say, I certainly, say, I certainly had the opportunity very much to always do something new. Um, On the one hand, in the framework that a corporation offers, that is, there are always vacancies in the group and due to our Works Constitution Act, preference is given to internal employees. The social partners pay attention to this and thus you always have the opportunity to do new things within the protected framework, quasi not having to give up an employment contract, so not having a new probationary period. I had the opportunity and then, so to speak, the opportunity, again and again part-time, and time out, at Telecom, to then build up my independence, so, that's a lot of flexibility and, yes, that corresponds to what I felt like doing and I would like to continue doing in the future. But you also like to learn something new. There is also the other kind of person, I don't know if that's the majority, I would first assume so hypothetically, who has a hard time learning something new or does not like to throw herself into new projects or how. Is your impression in your professional environment? So, not just telecom, but in general? Yes. Um... Yes, well, it's actually like that, so I don't know if I'm an exception now. I think there are already some of this kind who really like to do something new every now and then, maybe not so pronounced now. I have that, so especially when I'm now in consulting, even in medium-sized companies, especially in professions that may be. How should I say are clearer of their scope also of where you move, which is quite pronounced, for example, in my studies. Biologists are, so to speak, not working towards a specific job. You can also provocatively say they are studying for unemployment. So there is no real job you can do afterwards except in a pharmaceutical company, if you want to. That is, 
It is actually completely clear at some point that you, either you continue at university or you do something else, yes, and that's why, for example, you can find biologists pretty much everywhere in the world, in all kinds of jobs. This is perhaps a bit specific to the people who choose this course of study, other people choose trainings that are much clearer, where it is very clear, and then at the end, trained painter, doctor, whatever, tax clerk, in other words, things that are very clear and since this training course already specifies this very clearly, it may not be designed in such a way that I say, oh man, I do this or that or that again, especially since the paths in the past have often not given it away, so, what do you do, Ni? That's a good idea, probably, that it attracts people who are already certain by the character traits. Such courses of study are the same. Well, I studied social sciences. You can also become anything from taxi driver to chairman of the board. So, they will be everything. You have to do that on your way. You have to. That's also the advantage you have when you're structured like that, tick like that. What are you looking forward to? What about? So future developments? There is a lot there again at the moment. In the bush. Are you looking forward to all this AI stuff and... Or, or... How do you go about it? Yes. <laughs> Yes, so, I'll tell you, I'm just very lucky that actually these two big topics that have fascinated me all my life, that is sustainability and, so the question of how to continue for the future, is in the essential sense, and how is it fair to, on this planet globally and the other topic of technology and digitization, that I can connect them and do so again and again now in papers and so on. I have written a book on this subject. Um, and that I can accompany this, how shall I say, in the making, and no longer as a young woman, so to speak, at the beginning of my career, but already with relatively much also in the hump. I think that's a great stroke of luck, yes, that I am there and can make my contribution. Add your mustard. Can add my mustard to it. Yes, so that's madness. So I've had one or the other evening with ChatGPT. And I have to say, despite all the criticism I have and all the criticism that we all have to see and learn culturally, individually, socially, I had but again and again goosebumps moments where I thought, so now I have arrived in the future, so it's already awesome, what happens there? This fits well with my next question. What do you want to learn next? Is it prompting? How to best use chat GPT? I already have, so I'm already practicing all the time. So I also have to say at chat GPT, I succeed quite well. With my journey, i.e. pictures, I realize that I almost realize that this is not my discipline at all, and I totally admire. What others can produce there and for me, it just comes out as something where you can say, yes, okay, is nicely implemented, but is not really what I had imagined. Yes, so I think that's definitely, everybody in their business, that's what you should practice, copywriters, marketing people like me, people who write a lot of texts, you should somehow learn to deal with such a text AI. And others like my sweetheart, who is a graphic designer, who of course is now learning to deal with Midjourney and Dali, so that changes the professions today and especially in the freelancer context. People simply adapt it, so it won't be, how can I say, it's there, it's affordable, so that doesn't cost much, even chat GPT-4, costs about 10, 20 euros or something, a month, so that's all doable and you just do it. Excuse me. Last week I attended a conference online. Around artificial intelligence and they had really invited many interesting people and there were
Above all, I watched and listened to the discussion with artists. Artists and scientists, and they were all so enthusiastic and they all assume it. Of such an explosion of creativity. So that this just pops up now. And so there are so many new possibilities. The generation of knowledge and chains of associations and also a democratization of the tools, because now you somehow have possibilities that otherwise only Hollywood studios or such comparable sizes could afford. So really great. But now we're away from that. So you're very well versed. You've grown along with all this technology, so to speak, and now through these new technologies, one or the other profession will certainly break, so there will be disruption on the labor market. And what would you recommend to women who haven't somehow grown in the tech business? How could one perhaps stock in the STEM industry after all? Yes, what we have actually been experiencing more and more in recent years, at least now also in this, I say industry and bubble, in which I move so much, is that we have digital elements in all kinds of jobs, for example, project management. There is project management, let's say it's as old as the world, but this whole, this change towards agile project management, is now even certifiable, so then Scrum, that you can also coach and accompany more software teams. So that would already be a development path, so to speak, from project manager to, let's say, project manager in a digital company, in an IT company. And that's the way it is, I mean, of course, you can say okay, if I'm drawn to programming, yes then that's certainly an inclination that you should cultivate in yourself, so to speak, because that's certainly a job, you can do it for a long, long time and will earn well. So for people for whom money may also be a motivation, one should say, yes, learn programming. There are great courses, there are almost free platforms, what do I know, I still remember Google, but also platform independent. Which you should certainly choose. That's certainly something if you want to do that. You should do that. But I suppose if you are somehow in the middle of your life and have not taken this path, and especially when I listen to women, and I'm also surrounded by women a lot, they don't say, oh, coding has always been the dream of my sleepless nights. <laughs> no, that's not the case. So, isn't it? What I believe is that it's just important to somehow catch up with these digital trends. So to try these things yourself as far as the digital, I say, methods are concerned, all the tools. No, that's still, we just had it, not a matter of course. Don't just serve a Zoom conference. But perhaps also to be able to operate a whiteboard solution, sometimes a self-organization project management tool, like Basecamp or Trello or whatever, to really use this and to surprise others, what you can do with it so beautiful, these are now more like these. The how should I say, office methods that are certainly good for everyone, but if you Yes, how should I say, want to move systematically into a profession that is completely different, then I would always say, are you also well advised to look for a coach or let's say, I have already done such nice courses. Are you also well advised to look for a coach or let's say, I have already done such nice courses on the topic of vocational reorientation, so to sort yourself out again and again and ask yourself, what do I actually want now, that you don't just somehow, I say la chapelle, but that you also go forward goal oriented and look, where are my inclinations and what should the new job actually bring. I would really advise that. 
This means that as an investment of time to start a new job, it does not necessarily have to be a postgraduate course or even a course of study. But you can also go with a shorter unit, but just focus somewhere. And as you said, there are many things for free. What would you recommend to women 45 plus, that is our primary target group, but also to younger people? How they can participate in the future. Wie sie an der Zukunft teilhaben können. That might be a bit redundant to what we've already said, isn't it? Then let's summarize again. So, what would you recommend to others? Yes, so I, I'll tell you what I find really important. I mean, we kind of plan the whole movement, I don't know now, eight or nine or ten years, with social media, and now we have it all, at a mega speed with this AI, and I'm already experiencing it again, the people who were already in it and who are not yet inside, but now I have somehow perceived a very great openness, recently I also introduced chat GPT to my girls. They found that very exciting, so I would say, try the tools, try, try, to form one's own opinion, to recognize where they have bias or discrimination, to recognize where they simply talk nonsense, to recognize how to start talking to such a system and believe that it is a human being and to understand what is actually going wrong and why this is so wrong. So just question the things and where you want to get in, maybe read more again, but not so much. Trust in the narratives, from one side or the other, that, that would actually be the way I really think, we all have to be there as women, especially with the AIs, because they are highly discriminatory, also sexist. We must all be vigilant in all our roles, whether as HR manager or freelancer or mother or no matter, so it's very important that we are all vigilant and that our voice is also making us quite loud, even professionally. Okay. That is a very good point. So be open to try something new. Inevitably, of course, you come across the bias, but do not reject it alone, but continue to train for the fact that it is just a that the bias stop. Little by little disappears. Saskia, those were my 10 questions. Thank you very much. I found that somehow really nicely round. Gladly, it was a pleasure. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. <laughs>